Are you doing the best you can in terms of SEO? From link building to keyword research, when it comes to SEO, there are many facets to consider, and our hope is to eventually cover them all, focusing on one key aspect at a time, and beginning this week by examining on-page SEO. Most professionals building websites want to improve their SEO skills, and while the internet is probably saturated with tips on things like keywords and headings, a great deal of them are long-winded and redundant. We wanted to distill all those great ideas to get the practical advice most relevant to our subscribers. Those of you who follow our magazine know that we publish about six articles every week on design, marketing, and we needed to streamline our SEO process for our content to effectively reach our users and relevant readers. In this tutorial, we're going to focus on one of the most fundamental areas of SEO, on-page SEO. Search engine optimization, which we all know as the abbreviation SEO, is the process we use to optimize our digital assets, whether they be blog posts, landing pages, or YouTube videos, to help them rank better on search engines. On-page SEO refers to the technical steps that you make to optimize your pages and posts so they rank better for the keywords you have chosen. And just to be clear, keywords are not the only things that affect SEO. You may recall an earlier video where we covered how visual elements affect your blog content too. So let's move ahead and run through your checklist so that you can start SEO optimizing your own websites. In order to show you the on-page SEO workflow that we use, we'll be using an actual article that we've published on our Elementor blog. So by now we've finished writing our new article and we've pasted it into the layout we've built in Elementor. While we're here, we want to make sure that we include the right social sharing buttons, which are important for on-page SEO. The obvious reason for that is that it increases the likelihood of visitors sharing your content, further generating social media traffic, which will improve on our page SEO. Another reason is that search engines use social signals as ranking factors. Beyond that, users seeing your content shared on social media may link it on their own sites, adding further to your traffic and ranking. Elementor's Theme Builder also lets you create a single post template for your social sharing buttons, which you can then always edit to change or add a social share button, all without worrying about code or using additional plugins that could add weight to your post and slow it down. Which brings us to the next part of our on-page SEO workflow, performance optimization. Performance and page load speed are both crucial for on-page SEO. And if you're using Elementor, you're lucky because it's designed so that you don't need plugins for such things like forms and pop-ups. And this cuts down on a lot of the superfluous weight that affects loading time. Remember, less plugins equals faster load time. Hosting has a huge impact on your site speed as well. We recommend choosing a reliable host like Kinsta, WP Engine, or SiteGround, according, of course, to your budget. Another factor that will affect your post's overall speed is your choice of theme. Now, we recommend using Elemental's Hello theme, not just because it's ours. You see, there's probably a reason that it's currently ranked third most popular theme, even though it was only released just over a month ago. It's so minimalistic, it's practically blank, and it allows you to lay anything on it without adding conflicting or redundant data. And when using it with Elementor, you get the full advantages of the theme builder, which is an added bonus. Speaking of speed and performance, let's talk about images. Images should be as lean as possible. Make sure they are less than one megabyte by using tools like TinyPNG, Optimal, Smush, and Kraken to shrink image size without losing quality. Once I upload the image to TinyPNG, you can see it cut down the size to a fraction of what it was. Now, if you've already seen our masterclass on how to create an epic blog post, you'll know that images can play a major part in the layout, while they also have a part to play in on-page SEO. As a rule of thumb, always give your images a relevant file name, alt tag, and title, and if possible, a caption. Now, with our performance optimized, 
we can move on to the next part of our on-page SEO workflow, snippet optimization. We're going to go back to the WordPress dashboard where I've already installed and activated the free Yoast SEO plugin, which we find very useful. To use it, we've opened our post in the regular WordPress editor. In the bottom half of the edit window, we can see the Yoast SEO plugin. And this here is our snippet. And now we're going to quickly review some of the basics that haven't really changed since the dawn of SEO over a decade ago. To do so, I am in the content optimization tab of the plugin. I enter the snippet preview and click edit snippet. The snippet is the part that is shown in the search results and it includes the title, the slug line and the meta description. Let's begin with optimizing our title. Now, even though it's not the easiest thing to do, we recommend testing 25 variations of your title before settling on the one you'll use. This is known as the Upworthy method. If we're honest, there is no winning formula that can guarantee anyone a perfect title. But what the Upworthy method does is it helps us to think outside the box. Ranking high is one thing, but the real skill is finding ways to stand out of the crowd. If everyone is using titles like secret Instagram plugins or best plugin hacks, you want something different. Analyze current search results. Think of a title that will really grab your users and make them want to click on your snippet first. Then try the titles and see which of those gets the best result. Now I'll paste my title here and the green bar that I get indicates that it's the right length and it's a good title, if I do say so myself. Moving on to the slug. That's the additional text that we add to the URL to help the search engine as well as human users. We definitely think that you shouldn't use your full title, which can be a bit long, like in this case. Just keep the slug concise and coherent. For example, instead of using our full title, we'll use best Instagram plugins WordPress. Now the meta description or the abstract. It should be captivating, and a good way to do that is to give the reader the main takeaway of the article. Include a clear call to action and keep it short and sweet. As you can see, our meta description is also the right length, so we'll move on. Now, let's get back to the Elementor editor. As part of my SEO process, before I publish, I always revisit the content and layout of the page and further fine tune it and get the quality as best as I can. These factors play a big role in terms of the page's SEO. If you want to read more about the importance of layout and how to get it right, then please visit our earlier masterclass, which we did on using visual elements in long form content. If you haven't seen it yet, we encourage you to check it out and hope you get the right insight and inspiration that we try to put into everything we do. When it comes to the content itself, we suggest that you use the Hemingway editor to get even more suggestions for improving your content. It's one of those things that began as a novelty, but it very quickly proved to be useful when you want to make sure that complex sentences don't get too convoluted, as you can see here. We also suggest sending your article to friends and colleagues and getting their feedback. And don't forget that search engines like content that uses synonyms. They also like latent semantic indexing or LSI keywords. These form a system that search engines use to analyze the various words people use when discussing a certain topic. We use tools like Ahrefs to figure out what questions we should be asking and what LSI keywords to use. All this information is gathered on a Google Sheet, which you can use to expand the text of your current content. We also suggest reviewing your subheadings to make sure that they have a logical and coherent flow. This way you can be sure that visitors skimming your page will understand what you wanted to say before committing to reading the entire page. Links, both inbound and outbound, play an important role in SEO. Specifically with on-page SEO, they are important to three areas. Outbound linking. We want to be sure that the external links we are using are connected to reliable, trustworthy sources. 
You can see examples of this in our previous masterclass article when we created a link to Robert McKee's website. Second, internal linking. We need to make sure that there are links in our new content to our older related material from our own site. Again, this is easily done in Elementor. You just select the text you want to link in the text editor and it automatically suggests the relevant content to link to. And third, we want to create this same form of linking, but this time we want to make sure that the other content in our site is linked back to our new content, like an internal backlinking. A quick way to find relevant content on your site to link to your new content is by running a quick search on Google. While you're in Elementor, you'll want to make sure that your article is tablet and mobile responsive. And if you're asking yourselves what this has to do with on-page SEO, well, it's because when your pages don't look, load or work the way you intended them to, it affects the user experience, which affects, among other things, your ranking on search engines. Again, this is a subject that deserves a full masterclass devoted to it. But luckily for you, you won't have to wait long because our next Monday masterclass will be dedicated to the subject of mobile responsivity and what to do to ensure it. Meanwhile, a simple way to test your post for a mobile device is by using the responsive mode in the Elementor editor panel. Finally, we wanted to give you a bit of a bonus with two extra pro tips to get your on-page SEO to hop on up to the next level. The first tip will help our post become a featured snippet. These are the snippets of results that Google features at the top of their result list because Google feels that they will answer the user's needs more efficiently. Featured snippets also show a much higher click-through rate, or CTR, on XXX stats. Again, Ahrefs is a great tool that can help you figure out which of our articles have featured snippets. The best way to get your own featured snippet is to keep your text clear and concise, especially in the first part of your page, or at least for the first paragraph. Think of your snippet as being the answer to a question, so it should be short, around 45 to 80 words. Including an image next to this answer is another good idea. Just be sure to follow the same image guidelines we mentioned earlier. Sometimes, having a step-by-step -step structure can also help you get featured snippets on results for how-to questions. The second bonus pro tip is for rich snippets. These are regular Google search results that are made richer when displayed with additional info or data that Google gets from structured data in the page's HTML. The kind of content that usually generates rich snippets include reviews, recipes and events. If you want to know what kind of information Google looks for to enrich these snippets, check out the documentation on Google regarding rich snippets and structured markup. Google does have tools for testing structured markup and rich snippets. If you're already using Elementor, you can use the star rating widget, which comes with built-in rich snippets and Google structured markup capability. You can also combine ACF and Elementor's theme builder to create advanced pages that comply with rich snippets like recipe sites. SEO is a fascinating yet vast and never-ending process. Nevertheless, if you do nothing more than follow the checklist we've shown you in this video, your websites will better meet search engine criteria and requirements, and as a result, they will rank significantly higher. Perseverance and persistence is the name of the game. The more you follow these guidelines, the more your workflow becomes easier and quicker and the process becomes more intuitive. We hope you enjoyed this masterclass and we hope this advice makes a big difference in your website's SEO results. We'll be back next Monday, but till then, as always, we'd appreciate any comments, insight and any criticism that you may have and obviously any helpful tips that could help other users. Make sure that you never miss an episode and click on that subscribe button and tap the bell. Thanks for watching. Cheers.